What's up everybody, it's Crypto Rocket bringing you the latest and most important news in the crypto world. Guys, you have to stay informed if you want to make money in crypto. That's why I make videos every single day talking about the, the most important news that you need to know to make money money so subscribe to the channel and start making profit and like this video because it helps the channel out to grow and get recommended by youtube so guys today we're going to talk about vchain and bitcoin and the most important topics we're going to talk about today are new details on vchain project verify car with bmv unveiled portsmouth international port is implementing vchain based my care Traders say Bitcoin now faces two main scenarios, 16k or 9.6k, here's why. Stablecoin metric hints Bitcoin price will rise as buyers snap up Bitcoin. Bitcoin whales at all time high indicate extremely bullish statement. Fidelity is a 1000 pound Bitcoin gorilla in the making. But first, let's check out what's happening to Bitcoin. So yesterday, Bitcoin went all the way here as we can see. But then it was going down and now it's trying to come back up. If we look at the one hour chart, is it going up or is it going to... Oh, oh, it did go up a little bit here and now it's dragging back down again. So what happened actually? So Bitcoin passed our two support lines we have one support line right over here at 11k and 700 dollars and our second support line at 11k and almost 500 dollars so what happened so bitcoin first passed our first support line and it tapped it only touched our second one so it tested it and then it got back up to retest our first support line and then it went crashing down past our second support line and we hit right over here at $11,300. So then it went a little bit up. It almost tested this support line back, but it didn't. And now it was going down and now it's trying to go up again, but we're gonna see if it's gonna go up. Maybe in three scenarios. So it can actually go all the way down to 10.5K. And if it does that, then it's gonna go all the way down and that's gonna be horrible but if it continues just like this it's still a bad sign guys because if it continues it's gonna go down again and it might not even go up again the best scenario we have is if it goes down in this wedge here if this falling wedge it would be awesome so if it just continues here and boom it's this part and then drops off that's the best case scenario for bitcoin that's the thing that we need this needs to happen right now the good thing is it's at least rising see this so it's actually turns to green so it's they're still fighting <laughs> they're still fighting oh you can see this oh the spike of volume okay they're selling a lot this is this is kind of bad but i think it's gonna be okay i don't think bitcoin's gonna fall all the way to like less than 10k if it does that's gonna be horrible news new details on vchain project verify car with bmv unveiled an article published a week ago highlights new details about vchain's partnership with bmv vchain has developed the verify car solution to track possible fraud and manipulation of second hand dealers. The partnership between automotive giant BMW and VeChain continues to bear fruit, following the successful completion of the BMW program, known as the Startup Garage. VeChain appears to be expanding its relationship with the automotive giant. The partnership was already unveiled in April 2019 at the VeChain Summit in San Francisco, when Chain Albi of BMW Group introduced decentralized D app Verify Car, which is based on the VeChain Torchain blockchain. So VeChain is working really closely right now with BMW, and we have some awesome news, and they have something to unveil. Let's see what happened. Last year's announcement revealed that the Verify Car is designed to connect important vehicle data to the vehicle in a tamper-proof manner via the VeChain Tor blockchain. According to the former announcement, the focus is on protecting against manipulation of mileage, repairs, workshop book, and rights to service 
purchased in addition to the car. Vichin's solution for BMV could be used universally. In a recent post on Reddit, a user has made it his goal to search for updates of the project. He came across an article that was published in July on a German website and highlights the progress of the project. The main purpose of the D app is still the same, but as the article says, more emphasis put on the user's control over his data. Moreover, this article clarifies that BMW will not store any of the unique data collected from the vehicle in the VeChain public blockchain. Instead, the blockchain will be used to create a fingerprint that verifies the authenticity of the data, while all data will remain in the owner's vehicle. So, your information about the vehicle is not going to go to the VeChain public blockchain. It's going to still stay in the owner's car. It's not going to be sent anywhere. By accessing a D app, the owner can decide for himself to whom he wants to pass on the data, to a garage or a potential buyer. However, the digital fingerprint gives both parties certainty that no part of the vehicle has been tampered with. So they're putting a fingerprint to let people know it's authentic. That's the whole point of the VeChain blockchain integration. So basically you can keep all of your data and only when you want to sell your car or give somebody your car then you can transfer the, your data to somebody else via the app which is amazing. And you know if there is the fingerprint that means nothing has been tampered with and everything is as it seems. BMW will not save any clear data about its cars on the public VeChain. The group only wants to reference this via a digital fingerprint. This clear data stays with the user in the car. By accessing the app, the user decides who he will like to pass on which data, a workshop or a potential buyer. The recipients can compare the data with the digital fingerprints or reference stamps on the VeChain blockchain. If clear data and reference on the blockchain match, the recipient knows the data is authentic. BMW estimates that the manipulation of Wilco data is Germany alone cost around 3,000 euros per unit sold. Okay, that's a lot of money actually. That's only one single car. That's 3,000 euros, guys. And the data manipulation allows a salesperson to modify any component to look like a new or less used one. In addition, it was revealed that WeChain jointly bears the cost of operation and development. Once the D-app is ready for production, it can be marketed to all car manufacturers, including BMW's competitors, reducing the solution's unique selling point but creating beneficial network effects for the app's distribution. Furthermore, the article includes, if verified car comes out and is successful, it will be one of the first blockchain-based mass applications for German industry. Advantage of this D-app appears promising. So basically, this app doesn't have to be only used for BMW cars. It can be actually used for every single car ever, which is amazing. That's so much potential to work with really awesome cars and really big firms and companies. So VeChain is doing a really good job here. And if this continues in a couple of years, everybody is going to start using the VeChain Tor blockchain, which is awesome. Portsmell International Port is implementing VeChain based MyCare. Portsmell International is the first port in the UK to adopt the VeChain based solution MyCare, which is being developed by DNVGL. The British port integrated MyCare to prove the high quality standards regarding the coronavirus. Portsmell International Port has just become the first British port to adopt MyCare. The VeChain based solution developed in collaboration with DNVGL is designed to reduce the risk of coronavirus. According to a report by DNVGL, the port wants to reassure its passengers that all the necessary preventive measures have been taken against the spread of the pandemic. In addition, the port of Portsmouth, due to its high quality standards and amidst the decline in activity in the transport sector, has made adoption of MyCare to highlight the benefits of shopping. Andrew Williamson, Director of Passenger Operations at Portsmouth International Port said, Our aim was to give passengers confidence that the new preventive measures have we have put in place are one of the highest standard and to highlight the benefits of international sea travel. This verification with DNVGL provides greater assurance about efforts we are making to keep them safe. The entire port has worked together to ensure that we can carry out operations with the highest level of care. 
The VHM based solution applies a, a methodology to reduce the risk of infection and that can be compared to a hospital. The methodology was developed by DNVGL to provide tools for managing, assessing, and reducing the risks of infection from diseases. However, MyCare was also designed to be applied in other business processes. The data and information collected by MyCare are stored on the VeChain Tor blockchain. So basically, this company, I mean, this port is using VeChain's verification process. Everything could be more assured than before, which is amazing. The data and information collected by MyCare are stored on the VeChain blockchain. This ensures their immutability and security. UK business health leader at the DNVGL praised the port's capabilities in managing infection risk or added. The port demonstrated that it has a well-considered approach to managing the risk of infections. So this is one of the best ports you can ever find because they do risk managing and that's a really important part because most of them don't even check anything which is really really bad. That's why everything like this happened. Due consideration has been given to the latest international and local guidelines in conjunction with relevant industry bodies such as the British Port Authority. This demonstrates the willingness of the port to take the necessary measures to make the journey of its passengers as safe and comfortable as possible. Of particular note is the collaboration with operators leaving the port to ensure consistency in the management of the risk of infection. And even posted a tweet here, so congratulations to the Portsmouth International Port for achieving DNVGL's MyCare readiness assessment, giving confidence to passengers through an independent assessment of infection risk measures. This is amazing, guys. So let's check out what's happening with WeChain right now. Okay, we have a big low here. So it's actually all the way here at 0.05 which is awful and we have a giant volume spike of people selling which is even worse so right now we're at 0 0.016 which is a little better than this before but as you can see if we go to the one hour chart come on I think it yeah I think it's slowly trying to go down again which is really bad actually so it's not showing good signs right now but the thing is guys you can still buy it because we still have like these two shoulders here i mean like the left shoulder and the head so is it gonna try and make the right shoulder if it does then that's gonna be a problem because after that shoulder forms in a couple of months maybe a month or two then it's gonna go all the way down and that's a big problem but now it looks like it's going up so it maybe is forming that shoulder that we do not need so that's gonna be a problem but if it doesn't, if it keeps like going down, because maybe it's just going to go and spike a little bit down, then that, th those are good news, because later then, it can spike back up, and it's going to be amazing. Traders say Bitcoin now faces two main scenarios, 16k or 9.6k. Here's why. As Bitcoin price corrects, traders debate whether Bitcoin will visit 9.6k or 16k first. The price of Bitcoin has declined by more than 6% in the last 3 days and with the 276 million CME Bitcoin futures expiry approaching on August 28th, traders are nervous and additional downside could be in store. So actually that's today, so we're gonna see what's gonna happen. Following Bitcoin's rejection at 12.5k, traders foresee two key scenarios playing out over the short term. Some technical analysis believe that Bitcoin is headed to either 16,000 or 9.6,000. That's literally what I said. So basically we can only go really down or we can go really up and hopefully we're gonna go up first, but the near term outcome remains uncertain as it's dependent on the certain resistance and support levels being hit. Traders expect either 16k or 9.6 BTC. According to the Pseudemus Trader General, Bitcoin could raise to either 16k or drop to 9.6k. It's Bitcoin's weekly chart closes above 11.5k. The traders said the chance of Bitcoin rallying to 16k increase. If the price remains below 10.5k, the trader said 9.6 is the logical support, he wrote. Let's keep it simple. 11,500 key level if weekly close above 16k. If close below 1.5, 
obvious support because obvious 10.5 might do nothing like 6k and 19 9600 is the next strong support another compelling reason tra traders might expect a brief pullback to the 9.6k to 9.7k area is due to the cme gap these gaps form on the cme bitcoin futures markets chart because the regulated market closes during the weekend a cme gap typically is closed within a short period of time, and this raises the chances of a pullback. This is also a small CME gap at 16k, but only on a lower time frame chart where the gap has existed for years. In short term, another cryptocurrency analysis called Main said that Bitcoin bulls would need to reclaim 11.7k. Failure to reclaim this higher resistance level could result in extended consolidation phase analysis noted here is what you don't want to see as a bull price with the false break high and now stair stepping down last two up moves seem like clear bearish retest if this is distribution expect the selling to pick up speed soon bulls need to come in and regain 11.7 sell the news action amplified the drop earlier today the price of bitcoin briefly rose up as high as 11.6k Following the Federal Reserve Jerome Powell's speech on inflation, during the build-up to the speech, many investors expected gold and Bitcoin to benefit from Powell's speech about controlling the inflation rate. But shortly after the speech finished, Bitcoin price immediately declined from $11,600, dropping to as low as $11,125 on Coinbase. Cointelegraphy reported it could have been the influence of the market piercing in the Jackson Hole Symposium, and it lowered than expected inflation rate. The sell the news drop in the Bitcoin and gold markets further intensified the downtrend, causing Bitcoin to retract to early August levels. The sharp drop in Bitcoin price over the past three days also broke the short-term bullish market structure, cancelling out the higher low and the higher high patterns. Whether the altering of this trend will sway Bitcoin into the bearish scenario or of a revisit to the 9.6k or to 105 price range remains to be seen. So basically at the end here they're saying that uh, Powell's announcement should have intensified Bitcoin, at least people should have bought a lot more, but the opposite happened, people did start, start buying, buying more, but then they started selling like crazy and Bitcoin went all the way from 11k, 11,600 to 11,125, which is a big difference, that's almost five hundred dollars guys stablecoin metric hints bitcoin price will rise as buyers snap up bitcoin stablecoin supply ratio shows much more buying power among stablecoin holders currently with bitcoin trailing at eleven thousand four hundred dollars at eleven thousand four hundred dollars bitcoin is right for a fresh price surge thanks to stablecoin investors buying up cheap coins data shows Highlighting the latest readings from its stablecoin supply ratio metric on August 26, on-chain monitoring research Glassnode forecasts upside for Bitcoin dollar. Stablecoin supply ratio three times stronger than July 2019. SSR refers to the potential buying power of stablecoins over Bitcoin. A low Bitcoin price allows stablecoin owners, for example, on exchanges to purchase more of the BTC supply. This demand pushes the price of Bitcoin up given its predictable variable supply and high stock to flow ratio. As the price increases, stablecoins with which remain pairs the same and which fiat currencies stay they are pegged to can buy less of the Bitcoin supply. The ability to enter a Bitcoin position is called buying power. Currently, that buying power is high, meaning stablecoin owners can purchase comparatively large amount of supply. SSR is three times stronger than it was when Bitcoin hit these price levels over a year ago, Glassnode commented. In another tweet, the firm noted that the largest stablecoin tether was suspiciously primed to enter such positions. Further support comes from an, an increased USDT ARC20 balance on exchange over the past year, indicating that stable coins are waiting on the sidelines. Tether holders waiting to enter Bitcoin as 
Cointelegraphy reported Tether market cap passed a landmark 10 billion in July. In terms of average daily transfer value, USDD beat both Bitcoin and PayPal this month. One reason for increasing the supply and therefore the market cap of a stablecoin is to allow investors who purchase other assets to crash out. As Glassnow would explain in a blog post about SSR last December, an increase in Bitcoin price, for example, requires more stablecoins. The resulting lack of liquidity in the stablecoin supply makes it harder for investors in profitable positions to exit. The post summarized including, in order to compensate for the lack of buying power as Bitcoin price increases, new fiat money needs to flow into the market. The supply of stablecoins needs to increase. So basically, if we want Bitcoin's price to go up, then the supply of stablecoins needs to increase by a lot. And that's probably happening. And Tether is skyrocketing, which is amazing. Bitcoin whales at an all-time high indicate extremely bullish statement. Data analyst firm Sentiment has revealed that the number of dresses with more than 1,000 Bitcoins is at an all-time high. Analyst firm Glassstone is recording an unprecedented accumulation of Bitcoin at 500,000 addresses. New data from two major research companies seem to confirm that there are solid reasons to remain optimistic about Bitcoin's future performances. The data shows a new all-time high for Bitcoin addresses that accumulate more than 1,000 Bitcoin and are therefore known as whales. Archive Research shared that the data from the research from Sentiment. According to the chart below, the number of whales with more than 1,000 Bitcoin has risen to 2,200 addresses. Okay, so 2,200 addresses have more than 1,000 Bitcoins. That means they have over $10 million, which is crazy actually. It can be seen that this increase is steady since mid-2019. Arkin Reese, so, and this is the chart over here, so yeah, more and more accounts. In 2013, there were like, I don't know, maybe 1.3 thousand, yeah, maybe, but right now it's 2.2 thousand, so yeah, that's that's a lot, guys. That's a lot. Our current research suggests that Bitcoin whales currently seem to have no interest in profit taking. Furthermore, the company establishes a direct relationship between the start of the two major Bitcoin bull runs and the number of whales. Based on the figures, the current market could be at the beginning of the next Bitcoin bull cycle. The movement of the large Bitcoin investors has historically been a good indicator of when there is buying and selling interest in the market. As a result, it can be used to predict whether the cryptocurrency is at the start of a rally. In that regard, popular YouTuber Lark Davis noted that the increase in whale addresses is an evidence that it is time to buy Bitcoin. 1,000 or more Bitcoin is kind of a tricky metric because some of those accounts have way more than 1,000 Bitcoin. But the total amount of Bitcoin held in accounts of over 1,000 Bitcoin or more is around 7.9 million Bitcoin. So this, of course, is big time evidence that this that the very wealthy investor class they are buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin whales accumulate more than ever. Data from the research from Glassnode is, is consistent with the findings of Arcane Research. Glassnode revealed that there are currently 500,000 Bitcoin addresses with an unprecedented accumulation trend. As shown in the graph below, these addresses accumulate about 2.6 million Bitcoins. So this is the chart here. Okay, I can't even... Can even click the chart. No, it's not fair. Therefore, glass node and sentiment data indicate that the Bitcoin market is currently in an accumulation phase. Bitcoin price could benefit from during this phase. Larry Davis supports this conclusion and emphasizes that the large investors are staying strong in their positions and are not afraid to buy. We got strong holders. We have more and more whales coming in, and it's important to pay attention to what these the holders and whales are doing because they're looking around the corner. 
They see the big picture. Watch the whales. The whales are accumulating and they're accumulating at these prices. The numbers, they keep going up and that is important because the whales are not afraid to buy here. Yeah, but the thing is, when you have so many whales, that means like the whales control everything. They're gonna control where everything goes down and when everything goes up, which is actually terrifying. Imagine having a person control the whole market. That's terrible. But buying Bitcoin still means great for Bitcoin. Fidelity is a 1,000 pound Bitcoin gorilla in the making. Yesterday, Fidelity filed papers with the US Securities and Exchange Commission to create a new fund dedicated entirely to Bitcoin, which will require a minimum investment of $100,000. CEO of Unwrap Investment, Torn Ross, notes Fidelity's minimum investment size indicates they have no immediate plans to expand into retail offerings, but rather went to focus on the higher and institutional side of the business. The likely logic behind Fidelity's decision is better margins and pre existing existing formulas for success via industry leader Grayscale. Grayscale's Bitcoin trust caters to high net worth individuals and institutions and has seen its assets under management balloon over the past few years, now topping almost 5 billion. Ross further comments that Fidelity also knows that they carry a brand legacy that other investment managers and custodians simply can't match. Fidelity's brand recognition could allow them to beat our first movers like great skill for the growing pie of institutional capital allocation to Bitcoin and other digital assets. So Fidelity is a giant investing firm and they are requiring people to invest more than $100,000 if you want even to work with them. I mean, if you want them to work with your money, that is, and use your money to try and make a profit. Of course, they're, they're going to take a big percentage, but you need $100,000. So that's only high paying customers. And those are ultimate super high paying customers. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something new that's going to help you at making money in crypto. Like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos. It helps the channel out to grow. So thank you so much. See you guys in the next video. Bye.